guest is the last non-Power 5 winner of the Heisman Trophy, a man I've tried to impersonate, <laughs> and he's back on BYU Sports Nation today. He is Ty Detmer on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Ty, it's great to talk to you. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Appreciate it. Good to be on with you. How do we know this is not me recording <laughs> this earlier? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to run out the flag this weekend, and it's a very exciting situation. It's going to be great to have you back on campus. Um, what have the last, I guess, year and a half, two years been like for you as now you return to BYU? Well, it's been good. I've, uh, we moved to Arizona, living down in Gilbert, and uh, we've uh, enjoyed the the winters down here. Summers are a little warm, but um, been able to spend a little more time at the ranch, and uh, got a grandson that's 11 months old. So been able to spend spend more time with the family and and uh, just kind of catch our breath here and and uh, see what's next. So Ty, we just had. Uh... You know, Dewey on. I'm not sure if you heard the, the conversation, but, you know, as DBs are, um, we always love to go a little bit extra and in, in, in above and beyond with swag. And he said he was going to wear cleats. He was going to try to run a 4-4. <laughs> Do you have anything like that planned and scheduled when you run out uh, the flag to kind of compete uh, with that type of swag? I'm just glad uh, Mo Elowanibi will be there so that I'll have somebody to run with. So, uh, I'll probably be in my jeans and boots, and we'll nice little slow home run trot. It'll probably be my more my speed. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Um, and and the, the three of you were teammates, and there were some incredible teams, namely the 90 team. I mean, that's a team that's obviously beats Miami and you and the Heisman. I think people forget you're in the top 10 for nine weeks that year. That was just such a special season. What do you remember about that year in particular um, that made it so special? Well, we had a, a good group coming back from the year before. So we had a lot of experience, uh, a lot of guys that had uh, played together for several years. And uh, the camaraderie we had with each other, um, I think, you know, that's what, teams are made of you know the, the good teams anyway the, the guys that have been there together battled through you know situations and finally you kind of get to a year where everything's right you know and, and the guys have been there and stayed healthy and and uh it was a lot of fun you know we had obviously beat miami um early in the year and kind of set the stage for the rest of the season and and but more than anything just the the camaraderie we had as, as a team and the confidence you went out with every week. People forget the next week you play Washington State, and there's some massive – you're trailing in, in the second half or something by some large margin to make, like, this epic comeback. Can you remind me and everyone else kind of what that game was like as you needed a, an incredible comeback to beat uh, Wazoo the next week? Yeah, that was – actually, I, I felt like a bigger win because, you know, you, you have the letdown coming off the Miami win and – you start thinking you're really good. And then uh, you got Washington State coming in that had some firepower on offense. And uh, and so, you know, we get in that game and we're doing everything wrong. I think I had a pick six early and, and uh, just, I mean, everything's going their way and we can't do anything right. And then and then it come out and Lavelle kind of got into us at halftime a little bit. And, and uh, we went out and defense started getting stops and we started – scoring some touchdowns and it just the, I mean the momentum totally flipped from one half to the other and and uh that was a big win for us I felt like because you know that kind of woke us up and then we kind of went on a roll there for for a few weeks after that. Ty so um you know you talked about having just the relationships and uh just the team chemistry that that really helped you guys push through those moments and you know, I, I've kind of noticed that this year compared to last and a couple other years with, with BYU um, and really being able to push through the second, you know, or two overtimes uh, with Tennessee and then overtime last week with, with USC. Um, you know, what have you, your thoughts been on this BYU team being able to battle through adversity? Well, they've shown a, a lot of poise the last couple of weeks, I think, uh, hanging in there and, and coming from behind and then, uh, you know, just, just hanging in the game when, when maybe uh, – you know, when the team was younger, they, they've got guys now with some experience and, and have been in there playing for, you know, a couple of years together now. Um, so some of that experience and taking your lumps when you're freshmen and sophomores is starting to 
show show itself now you know they're they're hanging in there they're, they're more mature got a little more confidence and and uh, i've just really shown a lot of poise at the end of games to to not allow maybe a negative situation compound itself you know they've they've taken those things and and got past them and and went on to win the game so um it it shows now that the confidence they have and I, I think it's you know a team that never feels like they're out of it that they can always be in the game and and always have a chance to win at the end talking with ty detmer on BYU sports nation Ty, certainly the way it ended with BYU wasn't what you wanted. Hopefully you could have had a long stretch there as the offensive coordinator. Uh, but what, what's it like to come back, and what's your relationship like with BYU right now? Well, I'm excited to be back. Uh, you know, see, see the coaches, you know. You spend a lot of time with guys, uh, especially in the coaching profession, and, and form those friendships. And so, you know, we've, we've stayed in touch over the last year. And, uh, either through text or phone calls or whatever. And, uh, you know, so looking forward to, to getting back and, and uh, being a part of the celebration on Saturday and seeing Derwin and, and Mo and Jason Buck and, and uh, getting to spend a little time, share some stories with them. And so, you know, I've, I've always had a good relationship with BYU. It'll always be a special place for me. And, and uh, I'm excited to, to be back and be a part of it. Ty, let's let's talk about Zach Wilson and and quarterback play. Um, what have your your thoughts been on Zach so far this season? Zach's playing great. You know, I think he's gotten better each week. Um, you know, re- rehabbing a, an injury and missing spring ball. Um, I think it shows. You know, it kind of it takes him takes you a little bit to get back into to playing mode. And uh, I know the expectations were <laughs> through the roof for him coming in, which probably not fair to him with just uh, just having six six or seven starts under his belt. But um, you know he's done a great job of, of making plays on his own and, and using his legs to either buy time or to go get a first down himself. And and uh, you know that's that's a big attribute that he has that he can he can take it and, and go do something if the play's not there. And so. Uh, I think he's played really well, and he's kept his team in it. And, and uh, you know, the, the Utah game was obviously a rough start, but um, he's really done a great job of just going back to work and putting his head down and, and hanging in there and and uh, made a lot of plays the last couple games to, to help him win the game. One fun thing with uh, chatting with former players is hearing stories and, and things we didn't know in certain situations, right? So last week, BYU has a – uh, field storm after the game, obviously after the Miami game, all 120,000 people who claimed they were there uh, were on the field, right? What what happened in that field storm for you? Did you have your helmet on? Did did you get banged up at all? Did you crowd surf? What was that like? So I uh, I probably I think I did have my helmet on, and uh, and my biggest concern was, man, I'm going to get stuck out on the field and not get back to the locker room to hear Lavelle's, you know, post game speech. And so I better, I better hurry and get in there. So I kind of fought my way to the railing there behind the bench and shimmied down the railing and I get up and I, I get up into the tunnel and I run in the locker room and all excited. And I was the only one in there. And so it's like, you can't go fight your way back. You know, it's like, <laughs> That, that looked weird, like coming from the outside in, you know. So I sat in there probably for five minutes all by myself. Like, you know, I probably could have stayed on the field a little longer and Lavelle probably wouldn't have been mad. So it's like, <laughs> I come in late. So, um, that was, yeah, that was my post-game celebration was trying to get in there so Lavelle wouldn't be mad at me for being late to his post-game speech. <laughs> I'm, did, I'm did trying you... so hard not to, not to laugh. <laughs> My cheeks hurt so bad. <laughs> did you did you come back oh, out? Man. Did people start coming in? What happened? No, and people started filing in, but it was like one at a time. You know, it wasn't like <laughs> the whole group. It like, was what, like, are what are you doing here? here so then I'm like, hey, I, I was the welcoming committee as people came in, just kind of high fiving everybody one at a time. So it was uh, it was pretty funny, but you know, you look back like. Yeah, I probably could have celebrated that one a little more with the group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more of the story. Stay on the field. It's all good. Uh, let's finish with this. Yeah. Taysom Hill could get to start. If he doesn't get to start, he probably will at some point in the next couple of weeks with the Saints. Uh, what do you think of his opportunity 
with New Orleans with Drew Brees out with an injury? Well, I think it's, you know, he's got a great opportunity to, to I don't know if they'll have, you know, kind of QB1A, QB1B and, and rotate them or have some packages for Taysom uh, more so than they did when Drew was even in there um, or what that'll look like. But, you know, I, I know for him, this is uh, his ultimate goal is to be the starting quarterback in the NFL. And that, I know he's fine being the Swiss Army knife, but at the same time, he wants to be the guy and prove that he can. So this would be a great opportunity for him if he does get some time to, to do that. Um, you know, I was a little worried last week when he was playing a lot of receiver at the end of the game for Bridgewater. And I'm like, man, you know, are they planning on using him next week? Because they're throwing him a few balls here. And what if he gets hurt? Now what? You know, so uh, I'm sure they've got a plan in place to uh, get him the ball and, and, uh, have him be a part of it. I, I would think, you know, they, they would have more more packages for him, more opportunities for him to, to play quarterback and not so much maybe some of the other positions. So I know he's valuable to him on, to him on special teams and those things, but it might be time to just have him focus on quarterback a little bit and, and uh, be a great opportunity. Well, Ty, it was great to catch up. That was an amazing story. We're Best really excited here. to have you back in town and run out the flag. We'll hear from you again tomorrow on Countdown to kick off with uh, Dave and Blaine there. But thanks for the time, and it was great to catch up. You bet. Good talking to you guys, too. Okay, thanks. That was Ty Detmer on the Deseret First Credit Union the Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.